Hello, everybody. I am the Dark Seraph, doing something a little different today. Um, we're reading fan fictions. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why we've chosen to do this. I'm joined by Spongehog. Hello. And the lonely trash can whose profile picture is a gay picture of gay Putin. <laughs> Remember, always invest in drugs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tonight we're going to be reading It's Your First Kiss, Charlie Brown. No, not like the actual story, a fan fiction from 2013. It's your first kiss, Charlie Brown. I'm sure everyone knows about Charlie Brown. If you haven't seen the program on television at some point, you might have caught the VHS tapes that float around bargain bins in the United States. If not, then you might have seen it in the classroom, as teachers love to show the family-friendly television program to their students. It was in late August of 2013 that I came across a particularly strange episode of The Charlie Brown Show in a VHS slipcase that was for It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, a Halloween episode many people are familiar with. It was in my grandparents' attic, which I found while I was staying in their home in Minneapolis. I heard that Charles Schultz, creator of the Peanuts, grew up in Minneapolis, just a few miles from their summer home. The actual VHS inside the tape was blank and very old, with marker scrawling ITGPCB Take 2, and some Japanese or Chinese characters beneath that which seemed to have been printed out on some strange ink block. What's strange is that whoever had drawn a pumpkin and apple blossom tree beneath those letters had signed it with the initials, PD. I found that there were no people in or around 20th Century Fox or any of the other associated companies that would have worked on this episode with those initials. It all seems kind of strange. I posted on a few forums about the episode, but got no responses as to what the episode could be about. I don't own a VHS to digital video converter, so there was no way to put the episode onto the computer. Weirdly enough, the real title was It's Your First Kiss, Charlie Brown. Many of those VHS tapes had promos for other shows at the beginning, but this looked like some kind of rough cut. I heard the usual Peanuts theme as Charlie Brown walked out of his house with a baseball cap on. Something seemed a little odd about the show as some weird black lines had swirled up from the corners of the screen that looked like spider legs. It was very distracting, but I assume maybe this episode was meant to start as a dream sequence, as the sky was orange. The camera crawls up and moves to the right in a very jerky and forced manner, as though a huge matte painting that animators use was being forcibly moved out of frame. Snoopy was at one-third transparency, eating a bag of peanuts. He looked really nauseated, as though there was something in his water bowl that making him ill. That making little him bird, ill. I don't remember. Yeah, that's making him ill, yeah. That little bird, I don't remember his name. How the fuck do you remember, not remember Woodstock's name? Yeah. What's that best even... character? <laughs> yeah, it's just... Like, yeah, I, I mean, like, okay, it, it's competently written. Up until that point, it's like... Yeah. Uh, at that point, it's like, like it's like, it's like you you got the making your dog ill, and then it's like that little bird. I don't remember his name. That that's like you should freaking know what the and bird's if you name. Don't is every remember time. it. You know it's called yeah. Google. It <laughs> it's it's like, called literally. Look, yeah. Just just look it up. What's the bird's name just, in Woodstock? Just, oh, yeah. Hey, Come on, I just told you his name. Yeah, this uh, isn't yeah, even it, one of the lesser known peanut characters. So it's like, why even like? Right, like saying, oh, that little bird or something. Like, come on. If you said it to any other character, maybe I could forgive you on that, but no. Yeah, no. Yeah. The little right, bird, okay, I don't so remember its name trouble. because I'm an idiot, is seen laying on the floor <laughs> with its legs in the air. I thought I might have been dead, which would have been bizarre, but one leg was twitching spasmodically. 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 What the fuck? Spasmodically. Spasmodically. All right. What? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I need. Relating to, affected by, or having a character of spasm. They just say spasming. I need to. Yeah. Hold on. Let me see. <laughs> As the camera cut to Snoopy carving a pumpkin. What kind of transition is that? 
There was a serious graphic. There was serious a serious graphicness to the pumpkin carving, which seemed more stylized than the usual simple animation style. A serious graphicness. <laughs> okay, apparently that's that's a so word. Can, let me try to predict how this is going to go. They turned the pumpkin around to the carvings, and he had that hyper realistic bloodshot eyes. <laughs> it was so scary. And then I looked up and then flashed an image of two dead children. And <laughs> it was so horrifying. All right, I could well, not I stop. <laughs> this, is just, this is already getting off to a great start. Yes, it is. All right. Snoopy carved a pumpkin right. to resemble Charlie Brown's head. Then put a candle inside the pumpkin. No, no you know what's one thing I have to say here? How, how freaking hard is it to do Charlie Brown's head? He has nothing on his head except for a swirl for his hair. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be a very simple pumpkin carving. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah. yeah. The video stopped there, froze, and I heard the peanut scene playing out several keys for being, what? And I heard the peanuts theme playing, but several keys were being hit wrong. I think you mean they were playing the wrong notes, because no matter how you hit a key, it's gonna play that key. Yeah. Yeah. I myself am a professional pianist. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> and you could tell that many of the notes were being hit a few notes. And could tell that many of the notes were being hit a few notes over for some reason. Okay, writer who's writing this, could you have condensed that sentence to be a hey, 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 better written so we can read it better? Come on. No, do you know like, proofread you that before that you that post this shit? But, it's a run on I half. mean, I will give them it some is. credit. There are commas in place. Yeah. Compared yeah. to My Immortal, this was um, this yeah. is a masterpiece uh, that should be in uh, the Library side, of Congress. Side note, we actually read My Immortal uh, right before we did this. This was actually what inspired us to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like... Uh, maybe he, if he would have used Grammarly, then maybe that sentence wouldn't sound so awkward. But this isn't even a proper sentence. Sno Sno Snoopy carved a cut into Charlie Brown's face and put a candle inside and left the pumpkin there. Oh, that's graphic. But the time lapse showed the pumpkin slowly withering, rotting, and dying. As the candle burned away Charlie Brown's facial features, leaving a skeletal pumpkin that will soon became covered in flies and rotted down to nothing. The next scene showed that just showed Charlie Brown headed to school down the linear path as though the last scene hadn't happened. Charlie Brown was missing a shoe and his leg was brown colored. It was a very specific detail that I noticed. What's weird is that he knocks at the front door of the school before he's invited in. I never heard someone knocking to enter the school. Yeah, me neither. Like, who the fuck yeah. would be? Like, what? Is this a boarding school? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's really odd. Yeah. It's... All right, let's... Yeah. I, I get they're trying to do a creepy setting, but that's just a little too out of place. I get they're trying to put weird warning signs in this masterpiece, but come on. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah. And what Charlie does any Brown... of this have to do with Charlie Brown getting his first kiss? Uh, okay. Well, let's, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Oh, there's yeah. a girl in there. So we are getting to that. Yeah, it's like from the um, I looked into it to the actual VHS. It's about like Charlie Brown getting a kiss from the red, the Little redhead girl, yeah, from her. So, but right. I'm not sure about this. All right, Charlie Brown sits down next to Linus and takes out a brown paper bag lunch. All of a sudden, Charlie Brown's eyes grow exceptionally wide. 
There she is, he says, the girl with the red hair. Indeed, Charlie Brown's school crush was one of the major plot points that the show addressed. I bet one day, Charlie Brown stared, started, I'll go up to her and approach her and I'll do something that's impre- that will imp- do that th- and I'll do something her. that impresses her and she'll kiss me. Getting some you stalker vibes her, like, from this guy. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, maybe, but it's Charlie Brown. Come on. Come on. Yeah, hey. yeah. All right. A little cartoon hearts bubbled up around Charlie Brown while he hand- held his hands together and leaned into them, smiling. He looked a little off. Linus was holding his blanket, but there was a picture of the United States scrawled on it for some reason. I don't know, Charles. Men, well, boys in our case, shouldn't romanticize such things. What's weird is that I had never heard anyone refer to Charlie Brown as Charles on the show before. Sorry, um, okay, have you that, met Marcy? Yeah, yeah, there's Marcy. There was also, like, I think, there was also, like, another character uh, that was, like, Charlie Brown's summer girlfriend until she wasn't since... Oh, the, uh, yeah, no, Pepper, Peppermint Patty called him Chuck. Called him Chuck. Yeah. Peppermint Patty called him Chuck. Chuck. Marcy called him Charles. Yeah, Linus okay. never called him Charles. He, should, he always just called him Charlie. Charlie Brown. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll give them credit that, like, as someone who's watched the Peanuts specials a lot, like, it's, so far there's nothing that's, like, I don't know, like, out of place. Like, I don't know. That, like, well, the I'm, gang well, okay, everything like right a, from this thing. I mean, like, like how maybe, the like, characters are all gay the, vampire the, goths. <laughs> yeah, it's not out of character like that. They're mostly in character, but you know, well, so with far, the... so far, so far. But we'll see. Right. Okay, uh... the red-haired girl crossed the room in a kind of ghastly manner as Charlie Brown opened his paper bag lunch, which had contained a peanut butter sandwich with peanuts and a high with a highly stylized drawing of George Washington Carver, inventor of the peanut on the cover. Okay, George uh, Washington Carver did not invent the peanut. <laughs> he didn't even invent peanut butter. He just found that you could. He just found what a hundred uses for peanuts. Yeah. But it didn't think. Was but like, didn't think of about. But didn't think about pressing it into butter. Yeah. No. Charlie Brown seemed a little different in the next scene. He looks a little grizzled, maybe slightly older. He has some dust on his face that kind of looks like beard stubble. The room was full of puddles and puddles of water, and there were dead flies everywhere. The plants near the windows are dead too. Charlie Brown walks up to his teacher, and the usual brass noises are made, but Charlie, he couldn't understand them. What he said to the sound of the off-key trumpet or trombone. Indeed, Charlie Brown- horn. Uh, in, indeed, Charlie Harley can understand. I think I have some kind of learning difficulty, Charlie said, looking at his shoes, sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, my. oh my god. You, 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 you just now realize. You just now realize. Well, I have difficulty talking to women. I can't kick a football. I might be a stalker. I have a dog that's like eccentric and a bird who I can't even remember the name of. I'm sure it's not important. And only now. And I hang out with a best friend that sucks his thumb as carrying a blanket, even though he's the smartest one here. So, you know, that's totally normal. I think I might have a learning difficulty. Pigpen walked up. She said that something in the water is making everyone ill, and we need to drink this bottled water for the next two weeks. Where are we, in Flint, Michigan? Apparently. (laughs) Uh, What's weird is, at this time of the peanut syndication, bottled water was not yet in circulation. The label wasn't specifically drawn, but it looked like a type of Zephyr Hills bottle. 
Charlie Brown went into a shed with broken windows and took out a notebook. He had seen the girl with the red hair drop it that morning, but he couldn't get in close enough to reach her. Um, bottled was water was a thing at that time. It was in a can. It was called emergency water, and the can was lead lined <laughs> to protect it from radiation because fucking Cold War. Yeah. His heart skipped a beat when he read what was written. June 24th, 1967. There's a boy at school that I find really handsome. I think his name is Charlie. I saw him smile at me from across the cafeteria. I want nothing more than to hug him, maybe plant my lips on him, and he can smell my hair while I... Okay, okay what the fuck? Wow, wow no. this is creepy. Wow, no, she's the stalker this time. No, you thought Charlie no, Harley Brown was bread? And not, she's the stalker. And not creepy because it's unset because of creepy atmosphere. It's creepy because these kids are creepers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, there was some loud bang. It was sound like a rock hitting a shed. What are you doing in there? It was Lucy. I guess all the kids were supposed to be playing football, as Lucy was shown squeezing a football. Hurry up, you fuss budget. She yelled. What's weird is that a grown Asian businessman is shown walking in the background. But what I know about the show, you never saw the adult characters' heads, so it confused me. Uh, it confused me something terrible. A grown Asian man started to talk as the brass started up, but the camera immediately cut to the right of the screen as the kids were playing football. Lucy lined the football up for Charlie Brown to kick it. This was a common gag. Whenever Charlie went to kick the football, Lucy would pull it away and Charlie would kneel over. Okay, ready. Charlie Brown ran towards the football, but just as Lucy would pull it away, he continued to run out onto the field. What are you doing, Charlie Brown? Linus yelled. He saw the red-haired girl climbing onto a bus way out in the field. He chased her across the field just as the bus pulled away, leaving him there, alone. No one was even there, Charlie Brown, Linus said. Charlie sighed. A rock hit his head. <laughs> I got a rock. No, not like that. A rock hit his head rather hard as Lucy had thrown it at his head. I guess since she didn't get that satisfaction of pulling the football. <laughs> now that would be in character for her. Yeah, that was the whole thing. And, like, I was about to say, also, where's Peter Griffin when you need him? Just, like, if she did pull it away, just yeah. beat her up until she let Brown him. Brownhouse! <laughs> <laughs> now, you are gonna hold down that football until Charlie Brown kicks it. You got that? <laughs> yes. Right, go ahead, Charlie. Uh, Ow, uh. Charlie cried, and blood began to drip down his head. What is that? yelled Linus Van Pelt. Eventually, none of this none of the characters in the Peanuts universe seemed to know what blood was. Charlie put his hand over the wound as Lucy opened a first aid kit to find nothing inside. Okay, okay, so apparently these kids are in school and apparently have never seen blood. What kind of sheltered parents do these kids have? Apparently, they live in rubber rooms and everything. All their meals are coming to blender. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, 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 that's impossible because remember he had the peanut butter sandwich. Oh uh, yeah. That wasn't that was went that was run through a blender too. <laughs> it right, was a uh, peanut butter jelly sandwich in in a, a, a plastic bag, all mushed up, like it was run from the blender. The bloody bent blender. Alright. <laughs> All right, Sarah, if you want to take over from me from that. Part. The next scene showed Charlie Brown's head stitched shut with what looked like the same stitches used on baseballs. Um, yeah, that's kind of a common stitching practice. That's what doctors do. Yeah. Although, they're so sheltered and don't know what blood is, how does she know how to do first aid? I don't yeah. Know. Like, that's actually a very hard... Those are hard... That's a hard thing to suture shut. And yes, that's the right word. Mm -hmm. Do you use sutures uh, to sew wounds? I don't know. I just don't anyway, know. I have to find that red-haired girl, Charlie said. I'm running out of time. He looked at his wristwatch, which appeared to be drawn on at the time 8.16 a.m. There was a shot of Snoopy as the Red Baron. Excuse me? Uh, that's a, um, that's a thing that happens. Yeah. That's a thing that happens. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. The Red Baron is his rival, is his arch nemesis. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. 
Yeah, that's yeah, right. What's the the Red Baron is his arch nemesis. Snoopy's not the Red Baron, that's his rival. Yeah, yeah that's right. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. But here he was in a B-29 bomber for some reason. Huh. Huh. Mm -hmm. The next shot was all of all... Wait, what? The next shot was of... The next shot was of all of the kids at the school dance. Apparently there's a school dance now. I mean, yeah. I guess so. I mean, school dances are our thing in the Charlie Brown universe, but so... There's, what, what is this transition? Yeah, the transition's awful, though. Charlie like, was fumbling with the, within the crowd trying to get the red-haired girl. She was turned around behind the fruit punch bowl. Just say the punch bowl. Yeah, why do you have to be so specific? Like, are we getting yeah. back to Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway's description of everything? <laughs> like, yeah. she was wearing a black leather corset and red fishnets all over. She and a red bra. <laughs> anyway, we're going on tropic. <laughs> yeah. I'm, go I'm gonna approach her, Charlie said. Because that's how a normal talk person talks. Yeah. Linus was holding a massive occult book he had checked out from the library. What? <laughs> a book of the occult was at a public s school's library. No, no, no. Can you just imagine fucking Linus grabbing the Necronomicon <laughs> from the library? <laughs> no, I mean, like, apparently it's just like, he's, he's getting a book of the occult, like, why does he? Why did this, this, this? Why is this at the library of all places? <laughs> this is the kind of shit you gotta order on Amazon. Yeah. No, no, no. That's not. That's not shit you have to order on Amazon. That's like shit you gotta order off of like the Silk Road. <laughs> Actually, you probably could order the uh, book of the um, the occult off Amazon. When you can, if you can, if I can order uranium off Amazon, you can order probably find the Necronomicon on Amazon. Yeah. Alrighty, back to the story. I think I figured again. it out, Charlie, he said, sucking his thumb. There's a demon from Japanese folklore <clears throat> called the Yuri Ona. The demon takes the form of whatever you want the most. Charlie didn't seem to be listening, and once it finds you, it Charlie walked up to the girl at the fruit punch bowl and circled around her, but she kept turning around. He couldn't get a view of her face. Don't touch her, Charlie Brown, his childhood friend screamed. But Charlie just wasn't listening. It's just a projection of your mind, Charles. It's something you think you want, and it will kill you. The shot of Linus going up to another grown Asian man was shown. This time he talked. I heard the off-kilter brass, but it was slowly beginning to roll backwards, as if an orchestra was getting into tune. I heard the words, I have become death, destroyer of worlds as an explosion rocked the building and bright lights shot outside. I guess it was meant to be fireworks. Okay, the Bhagavad Gita is here now. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> oh, okay, Robert Offenheimer. <laughs> there was fruit punch all over the floor, but it looked like blood. Charlie Brown tripped on it, and it fell. He tripped on it, fell, and you saw a halo as he slid through the door before the tape popped off and recut. Okay, what the fuck? He tripped on it, fell, and you saw... Okay. I guess you yeah. write that sentence like that. Yeah, the, the run-on sentences in this story are just atrocious. Like, the person needs Grammarly. Yeah, he needs Grammarly. Sign up today. Hey, 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 hey. Get five uh, bucks not, off. <laughs> not, not, not sponsored. Not, not sponsored. sponsored. Actually, I, really I was about it. to make a joke about that, but... No, we're not sponsored by Grammarly. We're sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not sponsored by them either. Please don't sue me. All right. All righty. Hey... Now Charlie, he was running through a field which was unfamiliar to anyone that I remembered seeing on the show. He chased the red-haired girl way, way out into the field while 
pictures of feet. Oh, great. It's that fan fiction. Okay. <laughs> feet located. Okay. What's next? He's going to, like, slip on Gamer Girl bathwater. Okay. <laughs> Show me your feet. <laughs> well, pictures of feet hair, broken light bulb skulls, and baseball bats were carved into trees. The trees became more and more narrow, representing a hallway after a while, while Charlie Brown had to squeeze through. There was uh, as what could have been blood, a fruit punch, or some other foreign material which Charlie Brown became completely covered in as he chased the girl with the red hair through a snowy area. I don't have much time, he thought. I'm getting old. I have to get that kiss. I have to reach her. I have to... He chased the red-haired girl through the snow before realizing he was lost in a forest outside of whatever the town, town in Peanuts was supposed to be. Charlie, his eyes widened heavily and disturbingly as the picture distorted now. They widened and widened, becoming more intense, like Silly Putty pressed to a peanut comic strip before being slowly twisted and contorted to match someone's warped in image. Well, that's descriptive. Yeah. They, wig mm. oh. they wiggled and wavered as though they were underwater as he came into a steep cliff looking over a lake. There was a wet, a red wig stuck to a, a bodied, bloodied stump. He chased the beautiful red-haired girl before she turned around, revealing two bright, demonic red eyes that which peered, pierced through the low-quality editing of the Peanuts tape before she fell backwards down, down into the water as Charlie tried to grab her shoulder. Well, I guess they're sure hyper-realistic eyes for this fanfiction. Charlie Brown, the kissless and broken, dove into the shallow pool in an attempt to resuscitate what he thought was her. He dove deep, deep down into the water, pulling her up as she coughed up water and blood. Even though she was unconscious, as he went in to kiss her, she reeled back in horror like a deer in headlights. Was he so abhorrent a creature? withdrew and then went in again lip pressed to lip as he blew into her lungs sending her coughing up blood as she became conscious she kissed him and they both kissed there for hours on end it seemed as the time lapse showing hours passing and apple blossoms falling from the nearby trees he, took, that off. Stunned... Yeah, oh, go he took off his shirt and I took off mine. <laughs> I even Shut took up. off my Can we bra. Stop talking about my immortal for five minutes. No, <laughs> he got a robbing. You know what? And put her in her. You and put it <laughs> in her. You know where? Bright lights that stunned both their eyes exploded in the background. I thought that was the end of this bizarre episode as the screen faded, but the final shot was more stylized with a very realistic. Have you seen me? I'm stuck to a poster on the wall of the pool. With a picture of Charlie Brown on it. You don't go missing like this, Linus said with a sigh. It just doesn't happen. I just want to know what happened to my best friend. A shot of flashlights resembling a search party took up the final few segments of the shot before the camera zoomed through the trees to a lake. It was a shot of a toothless Charlie Brown laying there, frozen blue, dead. His teeth were shown buried in some rotted carved stump with red hair around it shirt was torn there were visible lacerations around his neck or x's in his eyes but not cartoon x's they looked like stitches dirty brown leaves surrounded him in his hand was a ripped heart valentine card his heart there was nothing wow that is it is your first kiss charlie brown yeah <laughs> that was <laughs> Something. <laughs> I like some of the I like some of the things underneath the categories. Lost episode. Pasta trying to be good when it sucks enough to be a troll. Like the uh, ten best. You know, <laughs> the ten. There was an actual attempt here. I will give them that. Yeah. yeah like they it actually. Was even, and they okay, definitely have a twisted enough imagination to write horror. 
Yeah. Yeah, def- definitely. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's pull out the shit meter um, Oh, boy. You guys uh, write it on the shit meter The shit meter is a, rating, a reading of the story where we decide on a 1 to 10 scale, 1 being it's a good story, being not that interesting, and we probably wouldn't even read it on here, and 10 being so goddamn atrocious that it's just amazing in some twisted way. So I would say this one is, I guess, a 5. Like, yeah, it's pretty bad, but there was an actual attempt here. I would rank it a 3, essentially. I'd give it a 6. I'd give it a 6. It... It, it's a good it's good on it like it's it's it has potential like if a few more revisions and if you uh redid some of the writing this story could actually be scary and maybe be interesting you know, actually it. clean up the grammar maybe write maybe draw some fan art of it yeah like yeah, this yeah, was definitely. yeah like this feels like a rough draft in which everything you would want in like the final episode final product is there but it needs to be refined essentially there, there was just an attempt with great. this there was an attempt and like wow you guys went high with that um them with your ratings i just feel like it just wasn't exactly and as bad it like it wasn't like i don't know again bringing up my immortal it just wasn't that but that might have right, set but... the standard too high for shit. Yeah, yeah. like I, I'm, I'm putting it as a, why I put it as a six is like, it's like it's bad. Like there's there's no denying that this story is terrible. But it, yeah. it has, like I wouldn't like I probably say like, I, I probably could lower it down to a five, but I'm gonna stick with the six because it's not. It, it has potential. It's, yeah. Uh, like, they really... try, the, per, this, the person here actually tried. Yeah, yeah it's like, it's, it's not a bad story at all. At all. Like, it, I mean, it's written horribly, but like, the, the idea is there. Yeah. I mean, that's the actually idea. an interesting idea. A boy has a crush on a demon, only he doesn't know what it is, and it costs him his life. There's an attempt here. And like, and even then, like, those last few sentences are actually creepy. Like that yeah. was actually well written. It's like, yeah, these here, there, that's actually pretty creepy. Just to have you seen me drawing, and you just see a rotting corpse of Charlie Brown in the forest. That's yeah, that's disturbing. Oh, that's, that's actually unsettling. Yeah. Oh, well, I uh, I guess that will be it for this time for fan shit readings. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> yeah. Let me know what you think of this in the comments and. Maybe we'll do some more, because, well, this was kind of fun. Yeah, this is yeah. very fun. So I guess with all that being said, yeah. I'm the Dark Seraph, signing off. Alrighty. Bye, guys.